Baik, seterusnya kita ke bilik berita bersama pengarah eksekutif Abdul Razak Abu Cik dengan perkembangan terkini misi mencari MH370. Silakan Encik Razak. Ya, Marlina, perkembangan perhatian uh, pasukan media se sudah pastinya pada hari ini akan bertumpu ke Perth di Australia di mana saya sempat uh, untuk kali ini, pagi ini berbual dengan uh, Nikki Batis iaitu wartawan dan juga produser dari ABC, stesen ABC Amerika yang kini berada di Perth. Uh, hello, good morning Nikki, how are you? Good morning, hi. Uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to speak with us for a second time. Um, the search in Perth is now uh, now enters its second day. Um, what is the general mood of the search party as well as uh, your media party over there uh, entering the second day of the search from Perth? I think after, you know, yesterday there were the hopes were raised um, at one point when you know people were pretty confident that these objects um, seen in the satellite imagery might be the plane, um, you know, and we learned yesterday they weren't found yesterday. But I think everyone's still hopeful that the search area has been narrowed down a bit and, um, you know, that we were on the, the P-8 beside in the U.S. aircraft and the pilots and the crew came back, you know, and they said, look, we, we knocked off one area, we're doing everything we can, and we just, we just want to keep searching and find some answers for the families. The... Uh, Initial find must be significant enough for the Prime Minister of Australia to make a statement in Parliament. The fact that nothing was found on the first day, did it dampen spirits somewhat? Um, I don't think so. I think frustration maybe a little bit. And, you know, just everyone not wanting to give false hope to the families. So I think maybe going forward, they might be a little more tight lipped be a little more quiet about what they think they might be finding. Um, but, you know, there's still hope that these two, two images, we still haven't, don't know what they are. You know, they, the prime minister here deemed them credible and, and found that they, good reason to really search for them. So I think there's still hope that, that something will be found. It's a matter of when and, and when we find it, what it will be. For today, um, would the your would your ABC uh, um, journalist be able to do a hitch a ride on the Poseidon as he did yesterday? No, today my understanding is no media will be on the U.S. P-8 Poseidon. I'm not sure about the other military aircraft, the Australian and New Zealand aircraft. Um, so no, we are on the ground today, and we're in touch with the U.S. Navy a commander, lieutenant commander, and will you know hopefully hear any news that they might have. So they are planning to take off in a few hours uh, today. There will be four military aircraft searching today, and then um, two ship vessels. One is already on location, and one is en route. Um, a Norwegian ship joined the search last night. It is past 7 a.m. already here in Kuala Lumpur, and, I, and we share the same time zone. Um, I would guess that the search party had already set out as early as 5 a.m. this morning at first light. Is that would that be correct? I know the the ships have the air the aircraft take off at different times. I believe one is set out already. I know the U.S. military um, aircraft is leaving a little later. They actually have 12 hours in between flights, so um, because they got in later yesterday, they had to start a little bit later today. So they're varying times, but everyone will be out by late morning. If you could give us a sense of what is going on in Perth at the moment, whether uh, ships are, and aircraft are taking off from air bases or naval stations in Perth, that would uh, be from the Australian uh, effort in this um, search? Uh, if you have the general fe feeling here, for us at least, you know, there's a lot more interest because, it, you know, people seem to be confident that if anything will be found, it will be in this, you know, 300,000 nautical mile range in the Indian Ocean, you know, which would be found by the search and rescue efforts out of Perth, uh, most likely. So media, more media are arriving. We believe people are in route, especially after yesterday's, um, you know, hopes were raised yesterday and after the Prime Minister's announcement that these satellite images had been discovered. I understand there is a large Malaysian as well as Chinese community in Perth. Uh, you have been there uh, for quite a bit of time already. Do you sense um, uh, excitement among the community there that something would be found? Um, somewhat, yeah. More so yesterday as 
he, you know, I think more people here were paying attention yesterday because of what was going on and these reports that, you know, possibly we were going to find something yesterday. Um, so it certainly doesn't seem to be as intense as it is in Malaysia, of course. Um, but there are, there is a, a one of the passengers' family is here in Perth, um, and we've tried to be in touch with her. So yes, the 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 people are definitely paying more attention. Here. What would be the contribution of the seafaring community? Because there was a bit of uh, interest in what uh, the uh, Norwegian car carrier, the uh, Hag St. Petersburg, uh, if it does find anything, it would uh, be tasked with picking up whatever uh, flotsam or jetsam that is found in the Indian Ocean. And then would be, I, I, would I be correct in saying that it would uh, bring it up uh, and um, for inspection in Perth itself, and there would be a lot of interest in what goes on in the uh, um, fa naval facilities in in Perth when that happens. Yeah, I, it's a little unclear it, it, exactly what all of the steps would be, but we have been told that you know any images that anything that's found, you know, the military aircraft vessels will take photos of what they find um, to analyze whether or not it is, in fact, a Malaysian flight. And then uh, an entire uh, rescue and recovery team would be sent out to, you know, pull out any debris, you know, ideally a black box, anything like that. And then uh, I think it'll take some time for them to look at, you know, everything. And, and of course, it won't take, if they identify it's the flight, if they find any debris, then they'll, they'll continue to try to piece together whether or not that will happen in person. I'm not sure. I would imagine a lot of different countries would play a role in that. Uh, people out here uh, who do not have. I know that the. I, just to add one, just to add one thing. Uh, I know that the company that found the satellite images actually is, is American-based, so it's hard to know, you know, who will play a role. Something is found. People over here with no um, maritime, his, uh, not much of a maritime tradition in history uh, as the people in, in, in the Southern Hemisphere do, do not uh, have an appreciation of how lonely and how open the Southern Indian Ocean is. Um, apart from the merchant vessels that do ply the area, uh, perhaps um, um, solo round the world salesmen, uh, 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 yachtsmen, for instance, their help in, in this particular search, uh, would they also come in handy at some point? Um, is there any um, news of um, round the world yachtsmen, for instance, in, in, uh, who would, whose um, vigilance would also be called upon in the search? I, I, nothing that we've heard yet, but I think as the days turn into weeks, you know, I think other countries will be called upon, as we're seeing now, the Norwegian ship vessels coming in. So I think it's hard to say. And um, But clearly the the rescue efforts here, at least, the people involved has definitely expanded in the last few days. The only reason I raised that was because um, we uh, up here in uh, different parts of the world do not get a sense of how lonely the place can be. And the fact that um, we had so much uh, hope that uh, something concrete would uh, come out from the initial satellite find. Um, do, you, do you, as a journalist over there and the people over there, get a feeling that um, are here on the second day that uh, we would get better luck in the search, uh, Nikki? I think that, look, the, the area that they're searching is huge. It's 300,000 nautical miles. The ocean is nearly three, three miles deep you know to, to give you an example yesterday on the pa side and we had a team on the flight and they did spot some objects but when they got close one object was uh, basically a, a cargo ship and the other this is how high tech the equipment is was a pack of dolphins which they spotted 16 miles away so i mean this is an, a, a massively expansive body of water so i think we were sort of brought back to reality a little bit that look you know there is still hope, but it's going to take some time. This is a large area. And basically, the way they're searching, they've sort of taken the entire area and cut it into a grid. And each day, they're taking a small box of that grid and trying to eliminate it. So, you know, they're just narrow, nar narrowing down that space until they do find what they're looking for. For the media waiting uh, on dry land, uh, Nikki, uh, what is the uh, arrangements made for regular updates by AMSA in the search to, to keep us informed about the, uh, the search and its results? Uh, we've been, uh, honestly, the 
there's no real press gathering area here. The UNSA we usually get updated via email, and you know, the sort of organizations involved in this are not based in Perth. They're either based in Canberra or in Sydney. So, um, you know, and the Prime Minister, if we see on the television, just like you do. So, the it's just sort of a lot, if, if there's anywhere the press has gone, it's uh, to the air. I'm sorry, the Pierce Air Force Base. But in general, um, there's not been a sort of media area here yet. Yet, I think more people are arriving with the latest news. So, if we were there now, we would be largely left to our own devices to uh, conduct our own, uh, to organize ourselves. Uh, would that be correct? That's right, yes, yes. And uh, do we expect regular uh, news updates uh, from, uh, the, from AMSA itself? Um, is there something along those lines organized? We get a few. We've got like a two to three updates from them each day, just letting us know how many different you know, aircraft or vessels are going out. Um, if, if that changes, anyone that's joined the search, the, the range of the search, the the distance from Perth, um, you know, anything that's, there, that's been found, we found out yesterday about the satellite imagery, and then also at the end of the day, we're told whether or not anything, anything was found, and um, so it's been a regular, fairly consistent update. Uh, without revealing too much of uh, what the ABC is doing today, um, what would um, what do you have planned for your team of reporters there, Nikki, today? We are just standing by and, you know, waiting to hear if any uh, search and rescue efforts are successful, if they find anything, um, specifically these satellite images, you know, that, that the, the Australian Prime Minister continues to deem credible. So we're just waiting and a lot like you probably have, you know, hoping that some, some news comes soon. Waiting with uh, a lot of hope as we are here in Kuala Lumpur, Nikki. Thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. Um, Uh, j- jadi itu ya Marlina, uh, berita dari uh, Perth uh, buat masa ini uh, mereka juga dari pasukan uh, uh, wartawan dari ABC di Perth juga menanti akan apa-apa hasil dari pencarian yang akan dilakukan di, uh, uh, di luar pantai Perth sepanjang hari ini. Baik, Kembali ke Marlina. Terima kasih Encik Abdul Razak dan juga perbualan uh, Abdul Razak bersama dengan wartawan ABC di Perth.